uh, I got a quick confession to make. Um, it's really hard for me to talk about it, but this is going to be my first run in three weeks. I've done zero running in the last three weeks. And the reason is because I, I had an injury, um, you know, and I, and I wasn't really comfortable talking about it because I, I, I felt like I've almost given myself, and <laughs> no one else gave me this title, but I've given myself this tough guy status. I'm a tough guy. I can do tough things. All right? And so when I had to take a rest um, to heal, it was hard for me to, to talk about it. And that, that really brings me into this conversation I had with Spencer, where he shares um, just how he came through the same battles. I, I myself came through the same battles of, of being, as a man, really being afraid to open up, you know, because it's seen as weakness and, and not even knowing how to open up, never mind opening up, not knowing how, what to say. And Spencer uh, shared with me a great story about sort of how he got a group of his friends and many more others to start opening up. Uh, let me let me get on with this run and then you have a listen to what Spencer has to say. Um, I've been a part of a football club for a long time and there's a very close knit group of friends from Lansom Football Club and um, I started a same type of thing mental our uh, mental health because it kind of something that it was very uh, something that I really wanted to speak about is men's health and make it more aware the awareness and especially among my peers and then, I pro- uh, then we decided okay we need to go away so every year no, we're going away, we must go away camping, we must go away for a weekend. And it never materialized. And then in 2018, I said, fuck it. Let's plan a trip to away. You know, we planned a trip to Langaban. First year, you know, it's the ego still around, the tentativeness to talk is still there. But the, the reason for that trips was for us as men to open up about what we're going through. And every year we go away, the guys are more comfortable opening up. And they could, they can talk about anything. And you learn things about your friends that we, your friends that you share a, a dressing room with, that you share a football field with, that you'd never ever imagine what they were going through. And that's just by men talking. Making, like you say, a safe space for people, to, for men to talk. And it's something that I always, always, always make a point of finding out how someone is doing. You know, I might not never hear from you again, but I, I know I'm asking you, how are you? Because so few of us ask each other that, and we're going through our own personal, fighting our personal demons, eh? and we don't know what issues at all. And yeah, so every year, so our, our next trip is now the 4th of October, our next weekend away. Back to Langabar. I suppose more, we got more stories to tell, more issues that we're going through, and it's dark, some of them are dark, eh? it's... And yeah, at first you, you're you not comfortable absorbing it. Okay, you, I'm not proficient enough to maybe handle it. I can give like a little bit of advice, but it's like talking to each other like now. Yeah, but it's pow- It's a very powerful tool. Very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. Some of us walk away from that weekend maybe taking on a lot of positivity and some of us maybe don't learn from it. But I hope that we all walk away from that weekend at the end of that weekend feeling better than when we arrived and that's just all I want for my friends you know because I don't want to hear tomorrow so and so hung himself or so and so shot himself and I don't want to hear that and if that can be avoided by me asking asking and asking then so be it I would rather be annoying in that sense and fucking go to your funeral has 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 the group of people that go away with you grown? Yes, I think they have matured a lot. I I use the word matured because you know sometimes we still want to be who we were at twenty when we were at almost fifty. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of 
So a lot of them have matured and in a good way. Because mm. now we can sit down and have these conversations, you know, mm. and that for me is a sign of maturity that we can, you know, sit down and I can ask you, I can, so I always kick it off is I always talk about myself. I always say, you know, I had a shit time this week leading up to Langabhan because my dad died on the the one weekend we were leaving. My dad passed away on that Friday. We're just coming up now, the 16th of August. And my family insisted that I, there's nothing I can do here, I must go away on that weekend. And every year leading up to us going away, I would tell them about that week I'd come, you know, I was like emotional, you know, with, you know, with my dad and so I kick off the conversation about how I feel, and you know, just to make them feel easier talking about whatever they're going through. And it seems to be helping because they start talking. I remember last year, just give you an example, it was loud cheering. It was like, I think 12 in the morning or something. They were sitting around a table similar to the one behind you. Just sitting, there was a cell phone, cam uh, torches on, and we just, each one, said what they were going through. We just sat around the table and we were saying, okay, it's my struggles. And it was, wow, just sitting there listening. Everyone just saying what they felt at that moment. And yeah, so that for me was a win. If we never talk about it again for the entire year, to be like about again, that for me was a win, you know. Now I find it easy to pick up the phone and call one of them and also, how are you doing? And now they will be able to tell me, nah, you know, I'm having to this and that in my work or this in my family or that's nah, more. And, um, I try to do that with the, some of my other friends as well. Some of them are more open to it than, than most, yeah. So yeah, that's a good thing. Eh? Yeah, that's a really good thing. And this, me having to share it today with you, it's, it's a part of a journey for me as well. You know, I mean, I also been through my struggles where I was in a position where I didn't want to talk to anybody. You know, I didn't feel confident in myself to actually talk about how I was feeling. I was so embarrassed. You know, as I said earlier, you know, some people went through worse things, you know, loss of life, which is something that I struggled with in that during my infection, my COVID infection, because I had a friend that died. It was very close to me. And uh, it haunted me. Like, so that's where my post-COVID depression came in and anxiety. Thing I, I think I didn't know what it was. I suffered from anxiety. I would go into a panic attack if I heard fucking Richard's in hospital with COVID and I would like fucking, he's going to make it home. And, you know, that I would fucking go in a tizzy. It would just affect me. It affected my life moving forward. I had a mental block. And then running fucking save me. So I will say that over and over, and over again. Running save me, yeah. All right, so at the offer coin, I'm supposed to do some stretches. I'll just do some minor stretches, but I think I want to echo on what, what Spencer is saying there. You know, in um, 2018, 2019, tough years, I moved here, and in 2020 hit, and that was mega tough. And, you know, I've spoken about this before, Jason Engeldu reached out to me, and he asked me to join this compassionate listening circle. And as Spencer was talking about, he and his friends sitting around in a circle, now they were face to face, it reminded me of just how powerful the compassionate listening circle events were for me. And how I've often said that that really just saved me. It took me out of a very, very dark place and um, helped me see my, my self-worth again, you know, that I wasn't, I wasn't just tied into the provisions that I create or provide, <laughs> uh, but that there was more. There was, I was a person and I, I value. And so, you know, what Spencer's doing with his group of friends and taking them out to Langaban. I think it's really magical. And just how he's, you know, he, he dedicates running to really being a meditation for him. <laughs> and in other conversations, he talks about being a love story. It's amazing. Can't wait to share that with you. But yeah, he, he really, he focuses on it and he uses it as a tool. 
you know, and, and I mean, your tour might be different. It might be taking a walk. It might be going for a, a bike ride. It might be, uh, you know, paddling a canoe. Like, I think whatever it is, I, I, I've just seen it now time and time again that the more we create movement in our life, the more we give ourselves physical hard things to do, we, the more we challenge ourselves to, to take on things in the physical world that are, seems impossible, the more we prove to ourselves that we are capable oh. of more. Hi. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Spencer. Um, you know, he's a fantastic person. He's got so much to share. The full interview is about 48 minutes. And I hope that you go check it out and listen to his full story. He's got an amazing story about how he survived COVID, how he then got long COVID and still managed to, even though he was scared out of his mind, still managed to run amazing times and really be a, a good impact for the people that's around. Uh, right, I still got the rest of this run. <laughs> I still got to get back. So let me go do that part now. Uh, but if you enjoyed this content, thank you so much. I really appreciate if you could give this video a like. And if you feel like you want to hear more stories about the running adventures and you want to be notified, then please consider subscribing to my channel. It costs you nothing, but it means the world to me. And it helps other people like you see these videos. And so they can maybe share in this good story. Yeah. All right. My name is Richard. This has been Richard Talk.